Now let's talk about taxation on investment returns. Uh, what are my investment returns? Well, one would be uh, income. Income would be an investment return. Uh, what income would I earn on stock? Dividends. Now, dividends could take the form of cash or could take the form of additional shares of stock. Now, cash dividends would be taxed in the year received as ordinary income, but at a tax rate more favorable than your marginal tax rate. So tax in the year receipt as ordinary income at a more favorable, a lower tax rate uh, than your uh, marginal tax rate. So let's say that I'm in the 30% tax bracket. Uh, so my uh, income would be taxed at 30%. My dividend income would be taxed at a more favorable tax rate, which was lower than that. Now, when would a stock dividend be taxable? Uh, when we receive a stock dividend, our cost basis per share would be adjusted. Our cost basis per share would be adjusted. When we sold the stock, then the stock dividend would be taxed as a capital gain in the year of the sale. So I am not taxed on the stock dividend in the year of receipt. I'm taxed on the stock dividend in the year of sale after adjusting for uh, the cost basis for the dividend. Let's take a look at an example of that. I buy 100 shares of stock at $20 a share. So my total cost basis is $2,000. Now, corporation pays me a 10% stock dividend. So I take the 100 shares that I bought times 10%. So I'm going to receive 10 shares in the form of a stock dividend. I add that back to my original number of shares purchased and I end up with 110 shares. So my total cost basis is still $2,000. Now, instead of owning 100 shares, I own 110 shares. So I'm going to adjust my cost basis per share. $2,000 total cost basis divided by 110 shares, my adjusted cost basis would be $18.18. .18. So if I were to sell this stock at a later date for more than $18.18, .18, then I would end up having a capital gain that would be taxable. Now, there are dates associated with dividends. The first is the declaration date. Next is the ex-dividend date, record date, and payable date. The declaration date is set by the board of directors, and it's the date that the dividend is declared by the board of directors. The ex-dividend date is the date that the price of the stock is reduced by the amount of the declared dividend. That date is set by FINRA or the exchange where the trade took place. That date typically is one business day before the record date. Record date is set by the board of directors. Whoever owns the stock on the record date receives the dividend, and the payable date is the date the dividend is paid, and that date is set by the board of directors. What type of income would I earn on bonds? Interest would be the income I earn on bonds. Now, remember from earlier, the interest rate is known as the nominal yield, known as the coupon rate, also known as the stated rate. The interest is a percent of par calculated annually, paid semi-annually, and bond interest would be taxed in the year received as ordinary income at your marginal tax rate. There is no reduced tax rate on bond interest. What other type of return uh, could I earn on investments? Gains, appreciation, capital gains. Capital gains are taxable once those gains are realized, once the securities have been sold. 
Now, my capital gains could either be short-term or long-term. Short-term or long-term. Short-term capital gains would occur if there's a holding period of 12 months or less. Short-term gains would be taxed at the same rate as ordinary income at the marginal tax rate. Holding period for long-term gains would be more than 12 months. Long-term gains are taxed at a more favorable tax rate than your marginal tax rate. So the long-term capital gains could be taxed at a lower tax rate. So if I'm in the 30% marginal tax rate, short-term gains are taxed at 30%. Long-term gains would be taxed at a more favorable, lower tax rate. Now, let's explore holding periods just a little bit. <clears throat> I buy uh, stock on August 1 of 2017. I sell that stock on August 1 of 2018. That is exactly a 12-month holding period, exactly 12-month holding period, 12 months or less, any gain or loss would be short-term. If I bought the stock on 8-1-2017 and I sold it on 8-2-2018, that would be a holding period of more than 12 months, 12 months in one day, that would be a long-term capital gain or loss. Remember, only realized gains are taxable. Only realized gains are taxable. Unrealized gains are not taxable. What's the difference between a realized gain and an unrealized gain? If I buy a security for $5,000 and I later sell it for $8,000, that's a realized gain of $3,000. But if I buy a security for $5,000, it increases in value, but I do not sell the security. Increases in value to $8,000, but I do not sell the security. That, too, is a $3,000 capital gain, but that is an unrealized capital gain, which is not taxable. So for gains to be taxable, they must be realized, which means securities must be sold.